Either. Hold on, wait. You guys go buy fish on the road, take it to a restaurant, and then go cook it for you. Wow. Hey, this one's for all my Moroccans. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know. I have to learn about the Moroccan people. You know where they are from. Things like that. You know, if I react to a song, man's got to know. What country the people are listening to? I have to know where they're from and type of things. But anyways, hey, what's up, guys? Your boy, if you guys are new, I know I'm weird. I'm like, I'm, I'm a very weird guy. But anyways, hey, what's up, guys? Your boy, Frank Tony. Today we're gonna be reacting to Casablanca. Casablanca. By Casablanca in Morocco, a city of con contrast. What do you mean by city of contrast? Morocco's rawest city. It's just like the deep part of Morocco. So let me know that in the comment section. But Anyways, I'm excited to see this. I'm really, really, really excited to see up, see this and how it goes. But anyways, you guys are new to my channel. Welcome to my channel. I'm Franklin Tony. I do reaction videos all the way from Canada. So you guys are new, do not forget to hit that subscribe button. Let's get to 4,000 subscribers before the end of this month in March. I really appreciate that, guys. Let's get to, and don't forget to hit that like button. Let's get to 50 likes and above for more reaction videos. And if I ask any question in this video, guys, do not forget, please, guys, come on. Don't forget to comment down in the comment section. Let me know. I'm trying to learn learn about the countries that I react to this. Song. I'm, learning, I'm trying to learn about them and stuff. But yeah, pretty much. Anyways, so yeah, without even me even saying too much, let's run to the video, guys, and see where we're going to. Let's let's. Right. I've come to Casablanca, a port city on the western Atlantic coastline of Morocco, and the country's biggest metropolis. Many visitors to Morocco skip Casablanca and head straight to the tourist hotspots of Marrakesh and Fez. But I've come to skip Casablanca and head straight to the tourist hotspots of Marrakesh and Fez. But I've come here to seek out authentic Moroccan life. Casablanca has a rich colonial legacy as it was occupied. Why is she, why is she saying Casablanca? Isn't it Casablanca? Moroccan life. Casablanca has a rich. Oh, she said Casablanca. Okay. okay. Colonial legacy as it was occupied by the French for nearly 50 years in the 1900s. Oh. It's a city of contrasts, both traditional and modern, Moroccan and European, and it's this unique mixture that has led me here. The I have a question: What's what's the religion? Uh, what's the religion of you guys in uh, in Morocco? What's the religion? So let me know down in the comment section. What's the religion? The city has an old medina which dates to the 1500s, several hundred years before the French arrived, and it's one of the oldest neighbourhoods in Casablanca. I'm meeting up with a local, Mohammed, and we're- Do you guys even have trains? You guys even have trains? Bro, in my city where I'm from, in Canada, bro, we ain't got no trains. We don't even have, we don't even have trains. It's a sad life. It's a sad life, but we move on. I'm meeting up with a local, Mohammed, and we're visiting the Medina a few hours before the breaking of fast, as it's currently the month of Ramadan, and locals fast during daylight hours. Going to go into the old Medina now. It's a very beautiful entrance. Lingerie, patisserie. Sounds very French. Petit tart. So you can really see the French influence, right? So wait, wait, wait. In Morocco, you guys also speak French. Sounds very French. Petit tart. So you can read. Really oh, you guys also speak. Wait, do you guys also speak French in Morocco? So let me know. Do you guys also speak French in Morocco? So let me know. Because I think she was saying something about like you guys got colonized. Morocco got colonized or something by the French people. I'm not really sure. See the French influence, right? So Mohammed was telling me, like behind me, for example, typical loads of bread being sold. She is fine. Damn. Oh. Oh. Right now, because it's a couple of hours before everyone's going to break their fast, and Mohammed was telling me that you know you never ever eat a traditional Moroccan meal, break your fast without bread. It's most what is this, guys? What bread is this? Yo, this is this sugar? What do you guys call this? What do you guys call this in Morocco? Someone let me know. It's important thing. Yeah, there's so many people that it's like the rush to get food before they break the fast. So loads of people queuing up for food. Oh. Everyone's very hungry. Oh, you guys are. Oh, you guys are Muslim. So it's Ramadan. 
So that's like that's Ramadan. Say break fast. This is amazing. Like I feel like this is like real local life. Completely surrounded by locals. Everyone's going about their day. It's so much fresh. Unbelievable. All the vegetables. Wow. <laughs> I just I'll show you guys, but I'm goofy. I'm a, I'm a goofy guy. Allow it. Just going down the street, it's so busy, there are so many people. Mohammed's telling me that everyone loves making tagines as well, so like you can see like amazing, the fresh, look at the fresh meat all hanging. So Mohammed's telling me that <laughs> amazing, the fresh, look at the fresh meat. But this man's like, why are you recording me fam? Why are you recording? That's what this guy's like, he's like, why, are you, why is this guy recording me? Meat all hanging. So Mohammed's telling me that actually a lot of the meat on offer is turkey because, you know, we're in the old quarter and it's actually cheaper than lamb, so... You see that people try to make tagine with turkey and, and that works out cheaper. This is chicken, so it's a bit cheaper than the turkey, but, you know, for Ramadan people want something special. So you have, like, maybe the wealthier people that will go for the lamb and the beef. Um, and then, you know, maybe some other people that want to be a bit more economical will choose, um, you know, turkey and then chickens as well. Nah, to be honest, I pick, I pick turkey over lamb any day. Turkey over lamb. Let me know, guys. What do you guys pick? What do you guys like, turkey or lamb? Industry and it's mainly sardines, so you can see how many sardines there are. Amazing. Such a nice look there. You. Why there's so many cats? Why there's so many cats? Bro, let me know, guys. Who prefers dogs over cats? Bro, I'm a dog person. If I was to get a dog, I'll get a husky. Cats? I just don't like him. Like back in my country, now I'm from Nigeria, but like over there, bro, we all think that cats are like witches, witches and wizards. That's what we think over 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 my country where I'm from. I don't like cats in general. I don't know. Let me know, guys. What do you guys prefer, cats, cats, or, cats or dog? Walking through the fish market now, so it smells very fishy. part that's literally the best part of the food my mom used to give me the head of the fish to eat can you imagine can you imagine like so this stall is selling horse meat and Mohammed is telling me they do also actually eat horse meat I mean it's not that popular but you know you can see people are buying it um, and you know people cook with it horse meat horse meat yo Hey, that's so deep. So you're killing a horse just to use it for. You killing a horse just to use it for meat. Hish. Hey. I like this song. Awesome. Now 
that we're walking through the market, you can feel like it's getting a lot less busy. So you had this huge rush, everyone buying food, ready to break the fast, and now like it's really clearing out and it's like a lot calmer. Ah. Mmm, it smells really good. Like fresh sardines, so good. The Whoa, old Medina is That reminds me guys, guys, back in my country, in Nigeria, we also had that type of similar thing. But ours, we didn't, we, we don't fry fish on the on the side. It's called um, it's called suya. Let me show you guys. So yeah, basically, basically this is it. Basically this is this this is literally it. This is it. This this, this is like what well, they, they they make this on the side on the, of the road. So you guys can see they just do this. But yeah, it's pretty nice. Like it's actually so good. Like it's so good. But like. I didn't really have the money back then to afford it, so I didn't really, I didn't really eat it that much. It isn't just limited to souks and food stores. It's also got many winding, narrow alleyways where locals live. So it's an incredible place for seeing the traditional local way of life, which hasn't changed all that much from several hundred years ago. The narrow alleyways, crumbling buildings, and loud atmosphere are very representative of local life in the old Medina. A lot of the apartments are occupied by whole families, so you could have three or even four generations living under one roof. It's chaotic and authentic and a very worthy place to explore. It's a real glance into Casablanca's original character. The graffiti present all over this part of the neighborhood are tags of one of Casablanca's major football teams, Widad, and shows Widad. that in Casablanca and Morocco, football is a huge part of the popular culture. Mohammed explained that football allows people to express themselves, with many youngsters choosing to be in a football club supporter team instead of a political party. <laughs> in Morocco, bro, football bro, is more talk, than just bro, a game for the map. Talking about football, I, all you Manchester fans, all you Manchester fans, what happened? 7 0. What happened? 7 0. Bro, I'm a Chelsea fan. Don't even talk. Don't even talk. Don't even talk. I'm a Chelsea fan. Fan, but even though we're tenth in the league, even though we're tenth in the league, we've never got beat seven zero. We have we got beat seven zero? No, no, we haven't. So no more, bro. You Manchester people, cause you guys. Oh, what did you get? What what couple that you guys want to get? Oh, you guys, you guys got into the game with Liverpool. Oh my God, we're big boys. And go whooped seven zero. Seven zero. You guys are gonna play who next? Real Madrid. Am I, is it Real Madrid they play next? I can't remember. Am I tripping? Whoever they play next, but 7 0. That's the goals they'll be giving them people in in, 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 in in the World Cup. That's the goal, the same goals you're chopping. It is well. People live and breathe football, and it forms a big part of Moroccan identity. Just walking around this old Medina, the old town, and you can just see some really stunning architecture. It's like 1930s and it's called Maures, so that's like a, very much like a mixture of um, French, European um, influence and then Moroccan as well. So it's just very unique and incredibly beautiful just to walk around and you look up and you've got these beautiful balconies and the mosaics and it's really nice to just walk around and admire it. She has a UK accent. This is one of the plazas in the old um, Medina, which is called Place Belgique, so the Belgian Square. And you can see some really beautiful examples of the Art Deco architecture here. So you've got these beautiful motifs on the, on the walls, balconies which look outwards towards the streets, which you wouldn't have. So right opposite the Art Deco apartments, you have Islamic apartments. And obviously they don't have the balconies that look out towards the street because very conservative, um, you know, religion. It's a really great contrast of, you know, the different buildings that you'll come across when you just walk around in the old town. Outside the old Medina, towards the coast, you can see the changing face of Casablanca, Damn. with grimy, overpopulated areas giving way to gated trees. mansions and Beverly Hills-style okay. streets. Driving around Casablanca, it's clear that this is a city of contrasts, where historic districts exist alongside a modern and cosmopolitan coastline. Oh, oh! so in Casablanca, I mean, it's kind of the same thing. In every city, there's always the rich side. There's always, there's always, there's always the, 
suburb place and there's always like the there's always there's always a high and then there's always a low place so i mean it kind of it kind of like it kind of is everywhere it's kind of the same thing everywhere hassan to mosque okay bro i wish i could swim like i legit wish i could swim i can't even swim do you, do you guys know how sad that is i can't even swim that's embarrassing The second mosque was built for the former king's 60th birthday, and its location overlooking the ocean waves echoes a verse from the Quran, which states that God's throne was built upon the water. This mosque is absolutely stunning. There is just so much beautiful detailing, and you know, a lot of Moroccan artisans worked on it. The fact that they decided to build, you know, such an ornate grand monument in Casablanca really goes to show that, you know, the king wanted to put Casablanca on the map and kind of it's like the future of Morocco. Fair enough. It actually looks nice, not bad though. The design of this mosque is also very unique because it blends traditional Islamic architecture, things like the domes and the arches, which is very typical of Islamic style buildings, with more Moroccan design. So when you see these colourful tiles, it's called Zelish here in Morocco, and it's very reflective of that Moroccan design. You've got a lot of artisans that have always worked in the tile mosaic industry, so the blend of the two gives rise to a very unique style mosque and it's very Moorish influences wow. so it's Moors. very kind of unique and emblematic building here in why do I feel like why do I feel like all these tiles all sorry all these tiles like they were handmade because it looked like they actually got painted by like people's like they were handmade that's what I feel like Casablanca Marsha Central okay I've come to Marche Central, which is a central oh, marketplace. Central. They have a lot of fresh fish here, and you can buy the fresh fish and take it to one of the little restaurants here in the market and have them cook it for you. So I want to try out the fish in Casablanca. It's a port city. That's Hold on. Wait. You guys go buy fish on the road, take it to a restaurant, and they can cook it for you. Wow. Marche Central. Marche Central, Ch Central, wow, okay. Okay, I didn't know that. There's lots of fresh fish on offer. Wow, so this is all the... Hello. Hi. Wow, there's a lot of fish on offer. All from Morocco? So you got shrimp? A bit of shrimp? Some calamar? Calamari. Yeah, great. What else is good to try? I've got calamari, got shrimp. What? Well, they're fresh from Morocco. Why is she why is she saying why is she saying calamari? It's calamari. Which white fish is from Morocco? San Pedro. Wow, San Pedro. Okay, perfect. So one fifty. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hi. Here. I bought the fish. I should do some translating on the phone because I don't speak very good French, so she's kind of translating on the phone for me. Oh, they speak French? Uh, yes, with God. Oh, they speak French. But I thought you guys speak Arabic. Oh my, oh, oh, it's something, oh, she said you guys got close. So some people speak Arabic, some people speak French. That explains it. That explains why. What's the name of that guy? Is he Jew? No, not Jew. What's the name of that guy that y'all? Je m'appelle mm -mm, France and I go go I go go France. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. I forgot the name. Is it Je m'appelle? I can't remember. But yeah, you guys basically know what I'm talking about. But okay, that explains it. A la plancha, a la plancha. Yeah. Yo, look at this man. My man is stepping. My gosh, wow. Look at him. Ooh. Beautiful. 
Thank you, Shukran. Shukran. That looks incredible. They call it the Sao Pedro or Saint Pierre. Again, it's Sa fresh. Sao Pedro. Blanca. They've got a little bit of uh, condiment. Like it smells quite spicy, so I'm just going to add a bit of that to it as well. Mmm. Wow. I don't really like fish like so that. So fresh. But... One of the good things about coming here is that you can try all this delicious seafood and it's so cheap. Literally 15 euros for loads of prawns, loads of calamari, huge white fish, sardines. Wow, we've got sardines coming as well. Damn, she, damn, she is in wow, the so lot. Wow, so now they brought the Get Scripsy, thanks for the subscription. Get Scripsy, thanks for the subscription, but damn. Sardines. Look at these sardines. Unbelievable. Sardines is one of the most common fishes that they eat here. There's so many sardines. That was an absolutely incredible lunch. The fish in Casablanca is so fresh, so tasty. And this whole, you know, this little market is very cute. There's a lot of restaurants that you can, you know, take the fresh fish and have them cook it for you. But most of them are shut at the moment because it's Ramadan. So during that, this month, a lot of them close. But I'm lucky to have found one and that was really good. Morgan flag! Casablanca's downtown area is filled with stunning architectural monuments built during the French occupation in the 1900s. Mohammed Square. I'm at the central square, which is called the Place Mohammed V Square. And this is where when the French were ruling in Casablanca, this was the central square. And you can see some amazing Art Deco style buildings. So you had the French headquarters, like the government was here. You've got the post office, which is a very old building. I didn't, even know, that, I didn't even know that French. Amazing square, loads, loads of pigeons. They also call it Pigeon Square. I didn't know that French colonized Morocco. As well. And one of these buildings has an amazing clock tower and you can see the Art Deco design. 9 a.m. There are so many beautiful buildings all around this area, which was, you know, the French Quarter and lots of the French architects were called over here by the governor, the French governor at the time, General Laiuti, and he really wanted to make Casablanca this beautiful kind of place with the European style art deco architecture. And, you know, for, for the French, it was going to be like the economic capital of Morocco. So they very mm. much wanted to experiment with the architectural style. So just walking around this house. Guys, where was it? What? what? Where is the capital of Morocco? Like, what's the capital? You know, central square and the roads around it. There are just so many gorgeous buildings. West, West, Wecasvol, Casablanca, Casablanca? We Casablanca, this is Casablanca. I think that's what it says. I think that's what it says. We this is Casablanca. Dun. So I'm in the Habuz Quarter and I'm about to go into the Habuz Medina, which is also called the Nubel Medina or the New Medina. So this area was built by the French in 1916 and it was built because the old Medina, which I went to yesterday, had gotten really overcrowded, very overpopulated. Oh, wow. So the French decided to build a new Medina, modelled off the kind of Islamic architecture, so that the Moroccans that were coming over from different parts of Casablanca could come here and they'd have somewhere to live. A lot of Moroccans from all over Morocco came to Casablanca during the time that the French were here because there was a big economic boom, there was a lot of work in different industries, in the port, textile industries. So nowadays this area here is very much a middle class, upper class neighborhood. So it's a real kind of contrast between, you know, the old Medina that I visited and the new Medina. It's kind of a very different atmosphere, a very different vibe. That's my 
know. Just walking around here, I can see that there's a lot of Islamic style architecture. So you'll see the arches are a very typical Islamic um, characteristic. And even though the French built the Habus Quarter, they still wanted to honor that typical Islamic architecture. So you can see the incredible designs here of the homes in the Habuz Quarter. You've got this um, carving, it's all handmade by Moroccan artisans. So you've got this carving, which is called Stuko here in Morocco. Stuko. And you've got the mosaics, which is called the Zelij Tower. Zeli, okay. And you've just got them all up the street. It's absolutely beautiful just walking around here and, and seeing this very unique style of architecture. So when you go down these little streets, you can often find very old um, workshops. You have artisans that have had their workshops for so many years and they're still working here. So I've just come across one of the artisans that repairs teapots and... Wow. Wait, they repair teapots? But like, down, they repair... I didn't know that they could... I mean, I guess it's like, it's, 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 it's copper, or is it metal? It's metal, so you could just like use a, what do you call it? Um... What do you call that thing? A fire to like melt it or something. To weld it. Weld, that's what I meant. It's got a really little workshop, but it's very cute, very quaint. Or you can use clay. Why are there so many cats? Again, like coming across these beautiful doors and that, you know, this is more than a century old. So you can just see the intricate carving and the detail that's gone into it. Just walking around here, it's absolutely incredible to see this. It's kind of in ruins and crumbling, but I feel like it gives it a very faded glamour. One of the things I've noticed walking through all these arches is that typically in Islamic architecture, you have the arch and then on top of the arch, you'll always have a room. So you'll see like there's a window and that's meant to be like the most beautiful room of the house. And oh. you know, it's a characteristic that you'll find anytime you're going through these um, Islamic type arches. That smell that I can smell is the famous pastry shop on this road, which is called Benit. It's got a lot of rich history and heritage. Famous all over the world. Even the New York Times wrote an article about it and they have all the typical Arabic sweets. So I'm going to go and buy a box of like- What do they sell in there? What's in that? What's that? Water sweets and try them because the smell, you can smell it from all the way up the road. Pastry, Benis. Ha, 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 loose. What does that mean? Oh wow, I would definitely want to get some. Bro, this is bro. I wish I could try. Like, I would. Tr if I if I went to if I went to Casablanca, in Mor if I went to Morocco and I went to Casablanca, I low key would try it. But like at the same time, I don't really like taking sugar because like sugar gives me a headache. You know, and my I work out too, so you know I can't really be eating sugar or nothing like that. Mmm. Mmm. So good. Reminds me of when I was a child. <laughs> delicious. Really delicious. We've got a whole box of many many different sweets. Casablanca is a city of contrasts. The mix of modernity and traditions which is ever present in the culture and social fabric of this sprawling metropolis is what ah, makes it so unique. Ah, you missed that. That would be in the nice. Culture and hey, social fabric when of this sprawling metropolis. Ah, he missed it. Damn. He missed it. This is what makes it so unique. What is certain is that this Moroccan city has a lot to offer. 
It's rich in history, full of authentic neighborhoods. Its people are down to earth and friendly. And in the middle of the seeming contradictions is a city fighting to lead Morocco into a prosperous future. And they, oh, then they're, they're surrounded by water. That's crazy. But now, we're gonna yeah, we're gonna end the video right here. You know, it was actually exciting. I'm excited. You know, I I don't think this is the first reaction I'm doing to like an actual city in Morocco, Casablanca. Casablanca is like it's nice. It looks like it's it's like it's like how can I say it's like. It's like where you go, it's like if you're traveling to a country that has culture, like they have their culture there. So it's like, I'll say, I, I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, but like, I feel like Casablanca is a place whereby if you want to go and you don't want to go to like all the tourist attraction or to the beautiful place and you want to just go to the, to experience their culture, you could, you could just go to Casablanca. I feel like that's it. But now nah, what I'm amazed at is that you can buy food off the street you can buy food off the street and give them to some restaurant to cook it for you and eat it that's nice that's such a nice man i really excited that i reacted to this but anyways it is what it is i liked it though i liked it 10 out of 10 man i'm excited but anyways hey thank you if you guys stay tuned to the end of the video i don't know how many of you guys stay to the end of the video but if you guys stay to the end of the video and you're not subscribed hit that subscribe button guys let's get to 4,000 subscribers i really appreciate it guys like the video share subscribe and turn that post notification let's get to 50 likes on the video and answer some of the questions that i asked throughout the whole video down in the comment section below i really appreciate it and i'll see you guys next time thank you guys for watching it's been your favorite boy franklin tony all the way from canada reacting to a more reacting to a casablanca in morocco but yeah thank you guys and i'll see you guys next time c'est une dingue, oh, toi, comme dans un fait quand t'as son Je couche la star, tu as le son On est chaud, mais c'est des glaçons, c'est des que je la j'ai coupé leur son Touche à la mie, j'évite de paradis On baisse ta mère et pour pas un radis On démasque et plus de face à dit On les bandits, mais c'est des candies Elle fait la hlèle, mais elle a sur Oli Elle a en effet dans ses mains, elle a sur Oli